Let's do an opening page. Okay. Um, well, first of all, um, what, I think what a great way to start off uh, the NEC tournament. Two really tough teams. Uh, you know, St. Francis, Francis New York for the first 35 minutes, 30, 34 minutes or so, really dominated the game with their physicality. Um, in the last, you know, six, six or seven minutes, we were able to really get the game going in our tempo. You know, the entire game, we really talked a lot in our huddles about sticking together, you know, staying connected to the phrase that we're using, and that it was our time. Uh, I really credit our team for, for not, uh, for continuing to believe in, believe in each other, continuing to believe in our scheme. When it looked the bleakest, our guys rallied around each other, focused in on the little details of things. And then we got some lucky breaks down the, down the end there. And I think part of it is, you know, you got to make your own breaks. And it's one of the plays we, you know, we had a chance to uh, get a shot to win at the end. I got two great players uh, beside me, two great guys, made great plays. As optimistic as you are, do you believe you'd be the winning coach tonight? You know, it was funny. I was looking at the clock. I always thought we were going to win it because I was looking at the clock. And we are just getting these timely timeouts where we could set our pressure up. I thought they were wearing down physically. Uh, you know, they really only have one ball handler since their suspensions. And, you know, I thought we were really starting to wear them down. You know, we waited to the last second. We were playing a lot of guys guarding Brent Jones because he's had such a great year. But I really feel like we started wearing him down. And they were able to get into foul trouble, which really kind of, I thought, turned the course of the game for them. Rashad, with those last few seconds of blur for you, I mean, do you even know <laughs> uh, what happened? Or? No, um, I just try to, you know, keep my composure and stay calm. You know, I feel like that was the key to, you know, down the stretch of our team, just staying together, staying calm, and, you know, just staying with it. Can you talk about both of your last two baskets? I mean, the, the, the three-pointer obviously is the game winner, but the other one was a, was a tough one too. If you, you get the steal and go in and get the leg. Um, the other guy did a great job, you know, pressuring the ball, making it hard to get in. And um, since I had four fouls, they didn't want to risk me getting any fouls, so I was able to play the intercept in the back. And I seen the, uh, the guy taking the ball out, just throw a killer's pass, and I just try to take advantage of it and see the more. Julian, you faced, uh, you dribbled into the lane there, you turned the ball over, and then you guys immediately had to foul. Do you think the game was over at that point? I didn't think it was over because I know they still had to go down and make two free throws. And luckily, our student section proud of them a little bit, so they missed two free throws. Then we went to the timeout, and Rashad said he was going to win the game, so I told the confidence that. You, you, you said that you're going to win the game? Yeah, coach uh, told me, just make the shot. And then it was like, go for two, and I was told myself, I'm going to shoot three, and I'm going to make it. That, that was when you guys were down. The last time I was eight seconds left, and you guys were down yeah. two. W was there a thought to drop the play for Sam because he had been in that situation twice and you know, delivered for you? That's a good or? question. Um, you know, you kind of just got to go off field. Rashad, I felt like Rashad was really carrying us tonight. Um, and so we drew the play up really to give all three of these guys an option within the play. Um, we wanted to get Julian going full floor with a head of steam. Um, if he didn't catch it going full floor, then Rashad was going to be able to catch it going full floor. Um, and just honestly, a lot of credit to him for having voice. Um, you know, I thought they followed the game plan really well there in the last eight seconds. Julian caught it going full speed. Wack did a great job of setting this guy up and coming behind for the handoff, which we had talked about. You open that penetration spot. And, uh, you know, the shot went in. You know, honestly, when he, when he elevated, I thought it was going in. And he's, he's the kind of guy. We play, we, him and I play all these crazy uh, in, the, in, the, in the game scenarios all the time anyway. So I just had a lot of faith when he elevated. He got a good look at it. Coach, I have to ask, as much as you guys were struggling with the three point, did you consider just going for it? No, I'm just taking it. Uh, well, Drew actually told Wack to go for the title. Um, <laughs> I, I want him to go for the win. I mean, I, I think I, I want to win. I mean, we could have won the game in overtime, and maybe looking back, maybe we should have said, "Hey, let's go for two. But I think in that situation, when you're down. You got to try to. You got to try to get the best what you can, and you do that mostly by by getting the ball to your very best players and just giving them the freedom to make decisions and, and to make plays. And so I really try to get out of the way with the play and just allow them to make plays. The, the last couple of possessions, you, you didn't even have to foul. I mean, you were you were down. Uh, you, were, you were down where it would have been one possession. I mean, you just wanted to keep time on the clock there? That's why yeah, we just started fouling. Like, I felt like the way the game was going, the way they were struggling against our pressure, I felt like the more possession we could create for ourselves offensively, um, the better off we are going to be. Now, we're sending guys to the free throw line with them now shooting 48 58%. They were making them. So I was just sort of betting that, hey, the percentage is going to actually balance it out for us at some point. And we are very fortunate that they did. But you know, for a long time, they looked like they were making all their free throws. They looked like they were going to make it very difficult for us. But you know, a lot of things happen in the motion of the game. The teams are coming back and you're on the road. And so we just wanted to rely on, on a little bit of that. And we got very fortunate that they missed a few down the stretch. And we were able to make plays and transition.
Julian, what, what, did, what gave you guys even any thought that you could come back when you're 19 points down and, and not played well and they're playing really well with nine minutes to go? Well, we just we just stuck together. You know, we, we had been in a situation similar when we were down 15 at Central Connecticut and we came back. And we just we just we've been playing so long together. Me, Rashad, and Sam. Uh, we just we just had a belief, and our leadership fed on through the rest of the team, and they started to believe as well. How critical was the pace in this game, uh, Jamie? You know, the first half there were 61 total possessions. You know, that's that's kind of St. Francis' game. You're driving the interior, taking advantage of your bigs. Um, it seemed like the game sped up a little bit, especially in the second half of that second half. You know, talk about the pace and how critical it was in dictating the outcome. The pace was critical for us. Um, you know, we, we talked about getting the game to a certain pace. And we, first half, they did a really good job of not allowing us to do it. You know, quite honestly, they put their guys in certain spots on the floor, and it made it very, very difficult for us to, to get there and trap. And they really attacked our pressure. I think it really benefited us at the end there when they were trying to run the clock out and they weren't attacking anymore when they broke the press. Um, but, you know, again, the loss of Brent Jones is huge for them because their whole press break is basically getting him the ball and allowing them to bring it up and attack. And so by him getting in foul trouble, by him wearing down physically, I thought that really helped to get us to that pace that we needed to get it to. Yeah, did you ever imagine you'd win with just four fast break points? No, ever, never. But, you know, I got a lot of faith in our team. You know, we played a lot of different styles of teams this year. And because of that, we've had to play a lot of different kinds of games within the game. And so I just knew if we could keep extending it and continue to shoot threes, which sounds crazy as it might, um, that the percentages would bounce out. And you know, as, as teams get more fatigued, they get away from their game plan discipline a little bit. Right? <laughs> they get away from their game plan discipline a little bit, and you know, we're able to really chew and kept pushing the ball in transition, pushing the ball in transition, and it really started opening some things up for us. Uh, in, in the paint, they had 28 points in the first half, but only 12 in the second. Did you guys make a defensive adjustment, or did they just stop doing what they were doing? No, you know, we, we talked a lot in the timeout about just playing like men, because those guys are big and strong down there. And you know, we want to play four guards, and, and that's the reality of it. We just talked about playing like men, and, and that started with us really pressuring the ball more and getting them out of their spots a little bit. Um, defensively, we just started, you know, trapping a little bit more in the half court to get, like Ryan said, to get the, get the pace going, and uh, you know, just trying to put the non-ball handlers in position to make plays and, and to make passes. We did a better job of that in the second half than we did in the first, and we we're able to score enough there to overcome it. Talk about playing like men for the first half, even the first 30 minutes. Um, basically, they were able to kind of drive the lane uncontested, not even any hard fouls that sort of thing. Meanwhile, you guys are driving the lane and getting hit and knocked down to the floor. I mean, did, did, you, did you feel like you guys needed to be a little more physical? Well, you know, we always talk about being a physical, fast, tough mental, tough mental team. Those are the things we talk a lot about. You know, we need to be physical enough. I mean, that's the reality of it is, you know, we're going to play four guards a lot. Um, you know, Julian Northfield's not going to gain 25 pounds of muscle overnight. And so we just need to be physical enough. You know, when the ball's in the air, we got to be able to fight back for, for loose rebounds and loose balls on the floor in particular because those loose balls on the floor and they have nothing to do with strength. That's all about like you know just your passion for the game, passion for the ball. And one's up in the air off the rebounds. I mean that's a little bit more about strength. You got to find a way to do it. Uh, but again, again, when we we're able to get the pace up to the level we liked it. It made it easier for us to rebound the ball. Um, and, and they really started. You know, really, I, I really think this. I've said it time and time again already. You know, Brent Jones is such a key player for them. Him getting fatigued was a huge thing. Rashad, have you been a part of the comeback like that before? Um, I feel like we had different games this year. Important to us, so you know we prepared ourselves on you know, the previous game and just staying with it, and staying with it, uh, together, and connecting like Coach said. Definitely something that we you know, always uh, think, think, think about. But but coming back from 11 with under two minutes to go, have you, have you done that before in high school or anywhere? <laughs> not that, not that I, can remember. Yeah. I think we had a game here earlier this year where at home maybe against Loyola, where we scored 11 points in about a minute 15. Just the way the, the spurtability of our team. Uh, I really shoot ball from outside, and I really get to the press because of it. Yeah, I don't. I never feel like I'm really out of the game, and you know, proved to be, be true today. You know, in regards to your end of game strategy, I, I see it all too often where teams, if they're trailing, you know, they let too much time pass off the clock. They foul the wrong guys. You, on the other hand, it seems like your team is well coached. You know, you know which guys to foul. You want to foul right away to extend the game, extend the possession. Joe, you know, talk about that dynamic. Well, we've, we've got really, you know, we've run a lot of things. Um, we've run a lot of things on offense. We've run a lot of different defenses, even though sometimes it doesn't look like it. Um, and we run a lot of underneath out of bounds. We, we do a lot of things defensively. We made an adjustment there at the end, which we haven't done in two years, huh? Um, but we wanted to really just 
make them have to throw the ball in bounds to someone other than Brent Jones, other than their free throw shooters. We got really fortunate that they almost had a couple five second calls and they had to use timeouts because of it. And so at the end there, they couldn't use timeouts to, to get the ball in the right guy's hands or couldn't, couldn't do different press breaks. And because of that, they had Omer take the ball out of bounds because he's a good passer. That's why they started the game with him. And that was, like, that was unexpected that they started the game with Omer starting for us. But he's a good passer and a good ball handler, so we can tell why. But conversely, he's a poor free throw shooter. So we just kept telling our guys, hey, don't let any of the other guys catch it. You know, if they go back to him, and we went into our, our call to foul. And they were able to do a great job of it. And the best thing was, you know, June had four, Wack had four. We were able to sub in guys like Malik Howard and Kaleem Wandu to get these guys off the floor to even set an offensive play up before they went in, um, and, then, and then to get the right guys fouled and turn the ball. Uh, Julian, last year something sparked you guys, and you made it run all the way to the championship game. Is this game sort of the, the spark? I think so. I think you could look at the next two games that we go into. Uh, you could look at any situation that we get in and, and say we've been through worse. You know what I mean? So. I think I think it's something that could definitely motivate us to, to keep pushing even if we do get down. And coach, just to match up with Wagner on, on Saturday, just how you look at that? Yeah, what a talented team. Uh, you know, I would say you know, preseason number one, they're playing with a tremendous chip on their shoulder. Um, we played them close. We played them played them very well here. Um, played them okay up their place. Thought they really physically outmatched us there on the backboards in particular. But it's going to be an exciting game. I mean, that's the reality of it. It's going to be exciting for a couple of reasons. They like to slow it down and play more physical and block shots and defend you. Um, you know, we like to get up and down, make you play at our tempo, and, and play fast break basketball. So it's going to be a battle of wills. But every game here in the NEC tournament is going to be that way. You know, we're pretty much the only team that loves to play up tempo. Um, that plays man-to-man -man defense. You know, we don't play very much zone. Um, so it'll be it'll be interesting. I mean, they played a zone the last few times we played them. It's worked okay. Um, you know, it'll be interesting to see how they play us this time. If they you know, run a little bit now, so it'll be interesting to see if they play us man to man, try to chase them around a little bit. Um, but, you know, they played us a lot of zone in the past, so we'll be prepared for their zone. Um, and, you know, but we'll be prepared to get the game going at the tempo that we wanted. That's the most important thing. Um, their place is always a very tough to, tough place to play. <coughs> and the gym is very tough to play. They have dead spots on the floor and stuff like that. And so, you know, we're going to go up there and uh, try to get them in these traps and in some of the tough spots on the floor and try to get the game going how we want. Appreciate it, guys. Can you say hello? You could do hello? Can you say hello? Can you say thank you? portion of it we didn't finish it out I thought uh, we turned the ball over too much in the second half uh, we had a couple of guys foul out who were <clears throat> primary ball handlers for us um, and give them credit they did a good job driving it and um, fouling and, and turning us over in the second half you know for 30 minutes a game that was probably the perfect game plan the coaching staff could envision you, know, you slowed the pace down you limited the amount of threes you were attacking the interior. You know, yeah. uh, what, what was the breaking point? Um, I just thought we, we, we started to, to, to go a little too fast offensively. I don't know if we got tired or uh, we turned it over a little bit and we kept putting them on the foul line. They shot 31 foul shots, I think, in the second half or something like that. Ridiculous numbers. So um, I think that hurt us and the turnovers hurt us. We turned it over one time in the first half. And um, 13 times in the second half. Mm. Yeah, how important was the pace? You know, it was 61 possessions in that first half. But, you know, we should have got to the finish line. The bottom line is we should have finished it out. We didn't. That's life. We, we live with that. We face up to it. Mm -hmm. You know, having, having Brent and uh, Alec, you know, foul out, they're probably two of your better free throw shooters to see you're forced to put a little, a little on the floor and a couple other guys that aren't, aren't the best free throw shooters. Uh, you know, that that's the way it goes. You know, they fouled out there. Are, Two of our better ball handlers and free throw shooters, and you know that's life. You know, you guys got to step up and do it, and they did for a period of time. The guys did a great job, great job. So um, I'm proud of them. They gave a good effort. We didn't close it out, so it's very disappointing. Um, you know, and that that's life. You know, you deal with it. And what do you tell your team after this one? It's hard. You know, you got to be honest with them. It's a very difficult defeat. It's hard, uh, but you take it like a man. You move forward. You don't make excuses, and um, 
you move on from it, you learn from it. For the guys who are back, it's unfortunate for the seniors, they won't get another crack at it. Uh, but for the guys who are back, they need to learn from it moving forward. Mm -hmm. And Jalen, I mean, you've accomplished uh, a ton individually, but you're still waiting for that first playoff win. You know, how much would you trade in the individual accolades for just a, a chance to get to the semifinals? Uh, I'll trade it all. I mean, I, I, I'd rather win than getting accolades, but I could say, um, but you learn from, from your mistakes. And we, um, we turn the ball over a few times, so I would, I, would, I would trade everything for just one, one playoff one. You know, you're, you're out of the game for the first seven minutes of that first half. But the team, you know, I, I think you guys outscored them out 10-5 uh, to five in the final seven minutes. You know, Jalen, you have to be really proud of the guys, you know, whether it's um, Fall or Martin or, um, you know, Douglas for how they were attacking the interior and making all these buckets and paint even in your absence. Yeah, in those situations, all it could be is um, the, num the number one fan for them. Just keep cheering them on and keeping them pumped up throughout the whole game until I come back. Is that it? Okay, guys. Thank you. Have a good night.